And Standard Bank's full year headline earnings per share up 9.8%. That's to 941 cents. A final dividend of 243 cents declared. That's up 7%. So joining us now to discuss the results further, Standard Bank new joint CEO, Sim Shabalala. Sim, thanks for joining us. Uh, so, of course, no secret when it comes to succession planning that uh, you were one of the top executives that was earmarked for the job. But congratulations nonetheless. And, of course, sharing this role with Ben Kruger. Uh, just give us some insight into who will be responsible for what and, and how you both intend to, in fact, uh, lead the bank together. Thank you very, very much. Uh, first of all, the job is a joint CEO job. And the first principle that underpins it is that we're going to be jointly and severally accountable and responsible to the board for the entire portfolio. However, for the sake of uh, focus, Ben will look after PBB and CIB, as well as risk and IT and operations, whereas I will look after SBSA, so I will remain as the CEO of SBSA. I'll also be responsible for the African countries, the geographies, as well as the chief financial officer will report to me. In addition to that, uh, I will be looking after the insurance and wealth businesses of the group. Uh, if I may just add, Ben will be looking after the operations outside the African continent. He'll remain chairman of, uh, of our PLC operations. Sim, revenues from banking activities up 17%, but from the rest of Africa, banking activities up 38%. I mean, this is the story of a modern South African company. And I suppose it's a legacy of Jack and Marie, now that he stepped aside, that he was forward thinking in his expansion into Africa. He was indeed. Uh, I have to say, though, and he would be the first to admit it, that he too is a steward of this great financial institution. Uh, we've been working on a strategy that was built in the 1980s by um, the management at the time, and Jacko added to that strategy, uh, gave it impetus, grew by way of acquisitions, uh, and as well as growing organically in the last couple of years. And you're right, the momentum in that business is enormous. Uh, its headline earnings were up 68%. And I s offer to you that there's more of the same to come. So I'd like to just hone in on one specific market. What about Nigeria? Because you have a strong corporate and investment bank presence there. Uh, but when it comes to the retail market share, it's still very low. What are your uh, plans there to grow your retail market uh, share in Nigeria, if you have any specific focus on that right now? Well, Nigeria is the quintessential African story. It's a country with fantastic demographics. The population is getting younger, healthier, better educated, uh, and they have greater disposable income. GDP is growing nicely, uh, and people are entering the banking system. So from a retail banking perspective, uh, as you know, a bank grows on the basis of growth in GDP and banking penetration, more people buying your products and, and services. Uh, however, in our case, we are a reasonably mid-sized uh, corporate and investment bank. We've been growing our branch network, but the opportunity there is to grow it even further so that we may be able to service our corporate clients, but also gather cheap liabilities. Uh, we are at the incipient stages of that strategy, um, and we continue to work on it and to develop it. So I'm having a look at the numbers again, or rather the focus that um, uh, comes under your highlights heading in the press release accompanying your results. It says here, a major focus area for 2012 was on driving transactional banking revenues, non-interest revenues. Why is that so important to a bank, uh, NIR that is? Um, just the basics of banking, we mobilize liabilities uh, or deposits from excess units uh, in, the, in the economy, and we recycle those into loans. Uh, and the basic revenue in a bank is interest income, uh, net interest income. The trouble with net interest income, though, is that uh, it is very volatile and is dependent in many instances on m monetary policy. On the other side of it is the fact that the large proportion of bank costs are fixed. Uh, and to the extent that they are fixed, if your interest revenues decline very, very quickly, 
your fixed costs don't decline as quickly. So, you know, regardless of what interest rates are doing, your branch system needs to remain open. You need to pay your staff and so forth. Mm -hmm. As a consequence, bankers worry deeply about what they call the burden, which is the banker's burden. And the banker's burden is really the extent to which your fees and commissions, your non-funded revenues, cover your fixed costs. And that is why fees and commissions are so important. The more you can cover your costs by way of your fees and commissions, the less risky is your basic income, which is net interest income. Well, there we go. Some and that's really the basic principle that's always driven us. We need that annuity income. Mm -hmm. Also interesting, something else coming out is, is the, uh, you know, putting the brake on unsecured lending uh, slightly there, Sim, but we're going to have to leave that for another time. But thank you so much for joining us and uh, looking forward to further conversations with you as the new joint CEO of Standard Bank, that Sim Shabalala.